Good afternoon. From the title of the video, you know what I'm about to talk about. I've been getting asked a lot lately, whether it be in the comments section down below, on Facebook, or just walking down the street, what camera I use. And the simple answer is a Sony a6500. But the answer to that question is really not that easy. And this is why. I also use a Canon 70D. When I'm talking about potato cam, I'm talking about my iPhone 6S. And I also have a Canon G7X Mark I. The main focus of this episode is going to be vlogging with the Sony a6500. I just wanted to point out that people use multiple cameras for different purposes. Each of these cameras have their own purpose. In addition to these that I just showed you, I also use drones. I have a Mavic Pro, and I've also used a Phantom P3 Pro on occasion, which actually belongs to work that I used to borrow before I had my Mavic. I use GoPros. I do have a DJI Osmo for work that I have toyed around with here or there, but I honestly don't like the picture that it takes, so I don't really ever use that. But let's get into vlogging with a Sony a6500. Now what you're looking at here is a Sony a6500 body, a Sony 10 to 18 f4 lens, a Rode VideoMic Pro, a Suryui 3T 35K tabletop tripod that is fold out and expandable. And then we also have the Peak Designs leash style strap. I like this because it's a lot thinner than their full size strap, which I also have for work and I really like it. It's very comfortable, but I like to do this. I like to wrap it around my wrist. The, uh, the regular Peak Design strap is too thick to do that. Also, when you're trying to cram this into your camera bag, this is perfect. It's strong enough. I'm no fear of this dropping my camera. It has the same connections, which are the quick release. So when you don't want to use a strap, you can easily pop these off. I love the 10 to 18. Currently, I'm shooting on a Canon 10 to 18 f4, pretty much the exact same lens on the 70D. I love that focal point. In the future, I believe it's a 16 to 105 lens I want to pick up. I like this microphone, although when I was just in London, Marius has a Sennheiser mic that is pretty good and like compared to this, a third the size. So if this breaks, I'm probably gonna look into that because his sound quality is pretty good and it's like half the size. And the thing about vlogging with this setup is walking down the street, it's pretty bulky because of the microphone. If you could see the microphone that's on the Canon right now, this is minuscule. But the Sennheiser that Marius has compared to this, this is massive. The struggles of vlogging with the Sony camera. Everyone thinks it's, you don't have a flip out screen, so you can't see what's in frame. But honestly, the flip out screen, it's good and it's bad. People have a tendency to look over at the screen instead of looking at the lens. So it's like this big glowing picture that you just want to look at instead of looking directly into the lens. You don't have that problem when you don't have a flip out screen. Yes, it messes you up when you're, you can't get your framing. Mostly if you want to frame something behind you while you're talking, that's a little difficult. But if you're just vlogging after a while, you pretty much know where to hold the camera and where to look at it. Yeah. You're going to get arm droop and you're a little less likely to catch it right away because you don't have the screen, but you can see where the lens is at. The main downfall that I don't like with not having a flip out screen has nothing to do with framing. It's the exposure. You can't see your exposure. If you're too dark or too blown out, you can't make adjustments because you don't know until you look at the footage. The workaround is you can use your phone. The thing that sucks is right now I'm in my house and my phone is on my Wi-Fi. So I have to forget the Wi-Fi for my house, link it up to my camera, when I'm done, I have to link my phone back up to my Wi-Fi. The thing that really sucks is my ISP does not allow me to change the password on my modem. So it's this crazy long mix of letters and numbers and it's a pain to put in. My solution, I use my old iPhone 5, 5S, I don't know. You can see this in use for the first time if you go back in scan through my Wandered Prevoke 31 user review video, I was using this. It connects to the camera, so this also controls 
the, the functions of the camera. So not only can I see my framing, see my exposure, I record, stop from my phone. This is a good workaround, but it's not ideal because there is lag. The pluses of vlogging with this camera is it is so light. Even with this tripod on here, this tripod compared to your standard issue Jobby Gorilla Pod, I mean, the Jobby itself is almost as tall as the tripod and the camera and the microphone. The benefit is when you expand this, you get almost the same reach. So this is literally half, if not less, the weight and it's, it's compact, it's, very, it's aluminum, so it's sturdy. With the 70D, it's a little heavy. You have to make sure you torque down the ball head, otherwise the camera might take a dive. With the G7X, zero issues at all. With the A6500, it depends if it's at a severe angle. If you're trying to do a, like a sky shot to do a time lapse and you got it bent back, just make sure you turn it down really good. Other than that, it's super light. I mean, vlogging with this camera has, it's really changed the game for me. It's so much crisper and so much cleaner than the G7X. The color on it is better than the Canon 70D. And I love this Canon 70D. I still use both the G7X and the 70D on a pretty regular basis. But vlogging with this thing, it's great. I mean, it's so small. If I don't need the microphone, if it's not super windy, I won't bother getting it. It camera is just so, so small. There's my camera right there. If I just need just my camera, this is my vlogging rig right here. I mean, the G7X is almost as wide as the A6500 minus the battery grip. The only, and I mean the only negative that I've seen so far with this camera is it did overheat twice and I lost clips. Now, when it overheated, I had it running for like 15 minutes doing a time lapse and it was probably about 90 degrees out. The first time I was not holding the camera, but the second time, I was walking around Shoreditch. I was filming all the graffiti in the streets. It was great, it was super hot though. And where you hold the camera, the battery grip is wide for two reasons. So your hand can grip it, but also because that's where your battery door is. So the heat of the outside, the heat of the camera and the heat of my hand palming this thing for like 15 to 20 minutes, it did overheat and the clips aired out and I lost the clips. The other day was actually the day I met Marius. I was filming a time lapse and then I gave him a gift and that was running for probably close to the 25 minute mark, I'd say. And it was still really hot at night and it overheated and I lost that clip as well. Other than that, those are the only two times that this camera has let me down, but there's been plenty of times where I thought I was recording with the uh, G7X and I wasn't. This has aired out once or twice on me and I've also lost clips on the G7X. It's a beast, I love it. Sure, I'm sure a Sony A7S Mark II would be far superior to this, but the autofocus on this is killer. This has some of the best autofocus in the game. The A7S Mark II has a better low light regardless of the lens, but it's also a full frame. If there's one thing I would change about it, besides the flip out screen, I just thought about this now, is the record button is in a terrible spot. It's all the way over here. But you have one, two, and three customizable buttons. So for me, I have C2 is my record button. So I can easily, I can reach up and press that no problem. The functionality of this camera is great. It's got one-handed access. Boom, I can turn it on. Boom, I hit record and I'm good to go. It also, right by your thumb, touch for focus peak. Everything highlighted in red right now is in focus. It has a zoom feature. It's optical zoom, so it's not ideal, but in a pinch it will do. Then again, C2 is my record button. C3, is for S and Q mode, so it's not going to work right now. 
Also here on the dial, you have one and two. Two is actually set up so I can easily spin it. Now I can easily record in 120 frames per second without going through a sub menu. I don't have one set up just yet. I wasn't 100% sure if I wanted to set it for cinema or if I wanted to set it for 4K. So until I figure out which one I use more, I just left it as the preset. Vlogging with this camera is so easy. It's so light that if I'm going handheld and I don't have the tripod to hold, I can easily just hold it. I kind of cup the lens and brace the body with my finger there. And I can just, I can walk around. This is not a problem for me. If I'm filming straight out, it's perfect. If I'm using the tripod, it's almost as if the second hand is just there to kind of make it a little bit more of a steady cam. Even the microphone, this way is next to nothing, so it's not adding any weight. I just, I all around love this camera for vlogging. It's really, it's up to my game. It really has. Picture quality is great. Autofocus is great. It's so small and compact. I carry it all the time with me. It's way better than having that side pouch on my hip all the time with the G7X. Yes, I always had the camera, but it was always in the way. When I'm trying to drive my car, I was buckling my seatbelt. I hated having it there, but I didn't want to not have my camera. With this thing, I mean, it's always in my backpack, and if it's not in my backpack, I generally have it on the tripod, and I just lay it across my lap while I'm driving. Don't even know it's there. If I see something while I'm driving, I can pick it up. Everything's one-handed, pop, turn it on. Don't get me wrong, I love my 70D, I love my G7X, I despise using my iPhone, but I love this A6500. Short of a flip out screen and potentially moving a record button up top so I can have the option to use these three custom buttons for other features, I wouldn't change a thing about this camera. I, I really, really like it. I was afraid that this plastic door was going to pop off because it doesn't come off and it just kind of, it's just there because that's where the microphone jack is. It's this little red dot there. So if you're using a mic, you have to have this little plastic door open where on the Canon, it's actually a little rubber tab that try as you might, you're not going to be able to get that thing to rip off. You're gonna have to cut it. I was certain that that little door was gonna pop off in like a week. And I'm about two months in with this camera now and not a single issue. So in summation, vlogging with the Sony a6500, that's where it's at. I love this thing. I would change very little about it. I would not even consider uh, a GH5, which is it's kind of its direct competitor. It's priced way higher than this. They just dropped the price of these. It's 1300 bucks now for the body. And if you get it through B&H, it's $1,300 for the body, an extra battery, a memory card, and a little bag. You really can't beat it. And that will conclude my ramblings of vlogging with a Sony A6500. So if you like this video or any of my other videos, do not forget to ring that notification bell down below. Because if you don't, you're not going to get notified when I post a new video every morning at 8 a.m. Good night.